to profit there where each week I scour the internet looking for domain names that have expired. And wow. And uh, anyhow, domain names that expired. And then I bring those to you in business opportunities. And hopefully this is going live because my computer just completely froze. There we go. Okay. Well, those business opportunities that we bring you each week come from other people letting their domain name expire. So I find them, I look for the right ones, and then I bring them to you. And then we talk about how we can build a business on them. So hopefully it's something of interest. And if you stay tuned, these opportunities built on the dot coms, the real estate of the internet, uh, they're going to be opportunities that you can start your new life on. So the old owner let them go. They're up for auction this week. And that means that by the end of this show, you may have discovered a business opportunity that will allow you to start creating the life that you've always wanted. Lots of opportunities this week. So please like this video, click subscribe to this channel, say hello to the other chatters, and let's get started. From the main to profit, domain to profit, from a dot com to a business idea. Take your domain name, develop an income from domain to profit. We'll show you how. Domain to profit, from domain to profit. Join Drew Wash and get started right now. So over 200,000 domains expire every single day. And the question is, why were they registered in the first place? So today, I'm going to show you uh, some domains, talk about the potential businesses for those domains in our uh, three-minute business plan format. And we're also going to talk about potential versus value. And it is the difference between a domain that turns into a success and one that uh, is dropped into the abyss for somebody else to place their hopes and dreams on. So... Uh, what I'm going to do, this is live, so I plan on coming out to the uh, chat. I want to hear from you. I want to know uh, what your business ideas are for each of the domains we bring up, as well as your thoughts. Like, you know, have you already started a business development? Are you considering something? You know, let us know. So uh, let me get started. So, uh, so feel free to hit me with any messages. I'm going to check the uh, chat on my computer here. And uh, hopefully we have some uh, people that are joining me. So, uh, well, thanks for joining us. And uh, if you're watching this in a restream, uh, you can also comment uh, any questions. We pay attention to them throughout the week. And uh, we, we want to chat and uh, do what we can to bring opportunities to you. So before I chat too much, I like diving right in. So let's dive into our first three-minute business plan. As I mentioned, I scoured the internet looking for uh, domain names that are going to be available this week. And uh, we're going to go over something I call the three-minute business plan. So let me bring this up for you. This is available uh, free to download. And let me pull that up. It is here. The uh, You can go to DTP, domain to profit TV, three-minute business plan. You can go to that website and it's going to give you the PDF template that you see on your screen there, which is going to give you, you know, the domain name audience. We're going to talk about each of these pieces as we evaluate each of the different domains. So hopefully uh, that helps you uh, gather your thoughts, uh, explore the creativity that you have in your own mind. Uh, my programmer, Matt, says that each time he hears a domain name, he immediately ignores where, whatever I'm saying and then goes to his own imagination, which is perfectly fine. Ultimately, it's not what I say here. It's what happens in your brain and in your life. I'm just trying to help you, uh, you know, get a little closer to it. So I'm going to uh, launch into our first domain name. My uh, One of my guys here, Chaz, created a nifty little tool to help me hopefully uh, simplify this process a little bit. So our first domain name that I'm going to bring up in the three-minute business plan is going to be stonecarving.com. This domain name uh, is up on uh, namejet.com. So namejet's a little bit different than, um, than some of the domains I've talked about in the past that you know appear on uh, GoDaddy. Uh, the namejet auctions actually have like an auction start time. So you have to be willing to pay 
at least, I think, $69 to enter that auction. You'll join other people, and then the auction proceeds from there. So this auction starts on 8-11, and you have to join the auction before 8-11, which is tomorrow, which is why we're leading off with this domain name. So stonecarving.com. I'm going to start the clock, and we'll dive right into this. So stonecarving.com, the audience is obviously – that's what we're always looking for is the word obviously. It's obviously going to be people interested in stone carving. So whether they're uh, creating stone stone well, carvings or whether they're uh, just selling other people's other people's other people. <laughs> oh, OK. Uh, but whether they're selling other people's stone carvings, uh, we're looking at that audience and those people, whether it's uh, maybe, you know, concrete or stone fountains for your yard your garden. Uh, We're looking in that audience, that market for this. And then the problem that we're going to find is there's always the problem that we mentioned last week, which is only one person can own stonecarving.com. So this domain name could be shared out with people that would benefit from the domain name and you could charge them some kind of fee to be listed there. But I also like the idea of artists being able to have an opportunity uh, so I'm going to go with a route of this is uh, you, maybe somebody that's in love with your stone creations, and you want to put them out there for the world to be able to buy them. So sterncarving.com, great authoritative domain name. Doesn't matter if you've been doing this for a week or uh, you know years and years and years, you're going to look like an expert just because you have this domain name. Uh, so I'm going to say the problem that we're going to be solving is getting your works out there to where people actually want to pay top dollar. Cause ultimately if you think about way, the way that art works uh, it's what worth whatever somebody's going to pay for it. So you may create a stone sculpture and uh, it may have cost you a hundred dollars to do it, maybe a bunch of time. So you would typically consider selling it for three, $400, but what separates that stone sculpture from something that sells for thousands of dollars well, typically it's kind of based on a name, right? It's based on a brand, a market. So you could probably immediately start charging more for your artwork just by having a domain like this, creating a brand, putting it out there, selling and creating that unique uh, selling proposition to where, you know, you're the expert that creates and puts your art on stonecarving.com. It creates the authority, which is, uh, if you can see it down in that little corner here, the authority from the domain name, the awareness would be either to your existing audience if you're just trying to use this as a way to charge premium money, or it could be something to where you could do ads uh, to sell various uh, stone things. Not the neatest option, but I wanted to lead with this one because it talks about passion. I I like this one specifically from the idea that uh, if you're going to buy this domain and you're going to put a business on it, chances are you're going to do it because you're interested in stone stonework in some way. So always let me know uh, what you would do with this domain name. Are you uh, interested in this domain name? How would you develop it? Uh, would you put a directory up on it? Would you, uh, you know, maybe somebody that's uh, into stone carving themselves, put something on there for them. So let me know in the comments or in the chat. I'd be curious to know as well as all the other entrepreneurs that watch this that are always curious and creating ideas and things. So, but passion and love is what allows entrepreneurs to look out into the world and see a better world out there. We see a domain name, you know, like I said, 200,000 domain names expire every day. So the question is, why did they register them in the first place? What was it that they were out to do? chances are they saw something for that domain name uh, that they were never able to realize, that they were never able to actually bring into reality. So what's the difference between somebody that brings that passion, sees the potential of a domain name, and somebody who actually creates a business on it that can be successful? So I want to take a moment just to talk a little bit and sketch out uh, this difference between how I perceive the value side of a domain name versus potential of a domain name. So I'm going to go over to Skycam here. So my handy dandy desk here, it's always behind me. So what I want to do with this is I want to talk about uh, 
So when we have a domain name, and this is our domain here. So our domains, they're like our little babies. They can, they can, you know, be built into anything we want. Uh, they have nothing but potential, right? Let me just I'm gonna put potential. Hopefully I spell it right. They have potential to be anything that we could ever create. So the only thing that's going to limit the potential of a domain name, it could be any domain name whatsoever. ABC, 123, XYZ, doesn't matter the domain name because if you build something great on it and you build some empire on it, you know, people are going to come there because you put your passion into that project and build it. Okay. But you're going to be limited ultimately. You're going to be limited by, uh, you know, your skills, uh, your skills, abilities, the time you're willing to put into this, the love, the passion that you bring to the project, uh, as well as, you know, finances, you know, it's going to cost money to, to, you know, either learn the programming skills necessary or to uh, hire out programmers. Uh, you're going to be very limited in what it's going to take to reach that potential for that domain name and build whatever it is that you're looking for. So the first piece that you can put on domain name is the potential. What we're looking at on these domains specifically, though, is not potential. Potential, because it's limited by your passion, uh, it can fail. Like, for example, if I was to buy stonecarving.com, there's likely, and I was going to put stone carvings I'm putting up on there. I don't care about stone carvings. Like, I just, it's not of interest to me. Uh, it may be a way to make money, but ultimately, uh, you know, I can't just do it based on potential because my heart's not in it. It would require a lot of heart and a lot of potential to, to seek out that potential for that domain name. So what I want to talk to you, though, is about the other piece. What we're looking for when we are dealing with domain names is more than potential. It's actually value. Okay, so here's what I mean by this. We are looking at domain names. These domain names are aftermarket domain names. They're going to cost you more than, you know, you can go to a registrar, you can go to GoDaddy or someplace, get a domain name that's never been registered from before for like 10 bucks, right? It, there's nothing there. It costs you 10 bucks. But what we're looking for is these domains that I'm bringing to you are going to be domains that cost more than what you would pay if you were to uh, just go to GoDaddy. You know, out of those hundreds of thousands of domain names, I'm only bringing to you like nine today. And of those nine, you're going to pay more than $10 for them. And it's because of value. Value is going to be the cause of it. So here's what I want to try to relate to you is if this domain name, you know, it has value. How do you get that value out? How do you get value out of a domain name? So you buy this thing. And it's going to cost you some amount of money. You know, you can get value out. So say you buy a domain name for 100 bucks. One of the ways that you can make money off that domain name is to uh, do what many, many people do and just sell the domain name to somebody willing to pay higher. Uh, that would be uh, right for sale here. This is what uh, many people do as far as domain brokers. A lot of people watching this right now are likely people that look to buy a domain name that has value and then find somebody that can pay more for that domain name. There's a lot of different things that you can do with this. So uh, there's a lot of ways to draw out value through that way. Well, when we're talking about developing a business on it, when we're going to build something on it, we can, you know, a lot of people try to, um, let's say, we're going to tap into this. This is my little tube. I'm, I'm going to use a different. Okay. So we're trying to draw up the value from this well. We're trying to draw up value to what it is that we're creating. So hopefully we can get out a little bit of money for ourselves. I hope that makes sense. So a lot of times when we do this, we think, hey, we're going to build a business on this. We're going to tap deep down into the value because we know this domain name matters and we're going to try to get some money out. And here's the thing. That is not what we're out to do. That's not, I, I, I want to get a little dramatic here. I don't like uh, hyperbole. I don't like using big language, but let me just say this. I've spent my life 
trying to figure out how to not do that, how to not work this hard to where you actually need to uh, develop the business up here and work really hard. Because if you want to work a pump and you want to get value out of something, you want to get water out of a, a well, and you got one of those old hand crank pumps, you're going to have to work your butt off to pump that thing, right? You're going to be pumping, pumping, pumping. And eventually water's going to start coming up, but you have to put a lot of work up front into it. And if you're going to put that kind of work into something, you better darn well have a lot of love and passion in it. It can be done. Lots of people do it. But ultimately, if we're talking about developing a domain name uh, for the purpose of creating a life for you, to create a business because you woke up this morning and said, I don't want to do what I'm doing. I want to change my life. Chances are one of these domains I'm going to bring to you aren't going to be aligned with your passion. So we need to tweak what it is that we're looking to do here. So let me go back to Skycam here. And if, you, if you're kind of tuning in, what I'm trying to show you is what I'm really looking to bring uh, potential versus value. We want domains that have value. And instead of doing what a lot of people do, which is try to build something on it to draw value up so they can pull some out, what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out another way to get this value. And this is, like I said, what I've tried to do my entire life, the experiment, the laboratory that is my life, is to get this value not by pumping, not by building some elaborate business up here uh, that is likely to fail when my passion dies. Instead, what I want to do is I want to tap it here to where, hey, you just put this tap. Then you could just use gravity. You can just use the, the weight that is that value to draw out just some of the money, right? You can, you can pull out some of the value. So what is this? Like, what is this? What does it take to tap the value of a domain name? Well, first of all, you have to have value in the domain name. You can't have some garbage domain name. We have to avoid garbage. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck up here only developing on it. We have to have a domain name that has value that when we plop that, uh, we pop a, uh, a tap on the side of it, we could turn that nozzle and just naturally some value, some, some revenue can come out for us to either uh, provide a lifestyle for ourselves or to... Uh, use that revenue to fund the building at the top, to fund that creation, that that larger business, that larger vision we have for the domain name. So I'll tell you what, it's a lot easier to have passion for what you're creating if it's paying the bills, right? Nobody wants to have a bunch of debt to try to fund some uh, project that ultimately they're not passionate about. It's how you hate your business life. And I don't want that for any of you. So hopefully this kind of makes sense. So let me just talk about what it is that I said I've spent my entire life here. It's looking at this, how to take a domain name that has value. And instead of working really hard to get money out of it, how can we just tap it? How can we just put something simple into the side of it, turn it on, and start to pull out some revenue. That revenue can be used to either fund a larger project or it can just be put in your pocket and you can move on to the next project. Hopefully that sounds of interest to you. You know, let me know in chat. I mean, is that of interest? The, the idea that, you know, you kind of, you get a domain name that has value, you tap it in some way, something basic, pull a little revenue off. You can either move on to the next thing or work on building that as a larger business. Over the next weeks, as I dive more into this, that is the business model that I'm going to talk about, is the tapping process, that process of monetizing the value that is a domain name. So I want to talk a little bit more about this, but I want to get to the next three-minute uh, business plan. So three-minute business plan, we're going to the next one, because uh, ultimately, that's the content that I want to make sure that you get, is that content, the opportunities this week that could save your... Uh, or create a life for you. So the next business plan that we have coming up is going to be, if I can find the screen. Okay. It is stone, Halloween pro.com. 
and uh, HalloweenPro.com talking about something that you have to have a heart for, something you have to have passion for. It's going to be Halloween. I uh, When I saw this domain name, uh, I looked them up the night before typically. And uh, this domain specifically made me think of uh, a friend from high school, uh, Joe, who is just a Halloween freak, right? He, him and his brother, Chaz, Chaz is, is works here. He's like right behind me here. He, uh, he actually, uh, they build haunted houses. And then Joe spends a lot of time building like elaborate uh, automated, like guys that move and all this crazy. I mean, talking about a Halloween pro, Joe's the Halloween pro. Okay. So he has the passion to uh, do what it is that we're talking about over here. He has the passion to possibly just boom, like build something on top of Halloween pro. That is an option. So if you're a Halloween pro, you're somebody that's passionate about Halloween, this would be a great domain to do it. So that is one option is to take the value that is part of this domain name. The reason why it's going to cost more than 10 bucks for you and to, uh, uh, to build something on top of it. But instead, how do we tap it? You know, so the audience are going to be passionate people about Halloween people. There are conventions, trade shows all about Halloween. So these haunted houses, I'm from uh, Ohio, Cincinnati and Ohio have just tons of haunted houses all over the place. Big money in these haunted houses and the different displays that they have in them with uh, horror sets and things, very expensive stuff. Entire trade shows are used to uh, to develop them. So basically, there's a lot of people out there that make their living on Halloween that would consider themselves a Halloween pro. So we have an audience of Halloween pros out there. Uh, so we have a bunch of different options. Let's go a little bit. Uh, okay, I got one minute left. I'm going to go straight forward. And let's use Halloween pro to have uh, to sell people's products custom creations, because ultimately there's not mass market. You're looking for specific, uh, like maybe a hundred customers. So Halloween Pro is the elite line of Halloween stuff. And this is for custom creators, uh, people that create Halloween stuff, how to get those products out into the market. Uh, they can't go to Halloween Express uh, to sell their stuff. They're going to have to need another outlet. This is going to be one of the ways to do it. Find the Halloween Pro, uh, find Halloween Pro stuff for your Halloween professional display or on the house, something like that. Authoritative domain name. Ultimately, lots of people would like to be the Halloween pro, but only one person can be HalloweenPro.com uh, or listed on that site, which hopefully they pay some kind of monthly subscription. Boom. I don't know. Three minute business for Halloween pro. Uh, Joe, if you ever watch this, uh, that was for you, buddy. That was for you or for, what other, uh, what, whoever the other uh, Halloween pro enthusiasts that are out there, uh, HalloweenPro.com. As I show, you can see it ends in two days. It is up on GoDaddy. And as of the point that I looked it up, it was only $12 uh, plus registration fee and things. But uh, not bad for any Halloween pro out there. And I, uh, I spell Halloween wrong all the time. I had it wrong. I actually had H-O-L-L and I had to go back. But it is spelled correctly, which I should say always check the spelling, never take my word for anything. Do your own due diligence to make sure the words that I present are spelled right and things like that. So, uh, okay. Enough from lawyer Drew. Uh, so I was talking about the love or about how many people would love to be Halloween pro. And I think that brings me to a little bit of, uh, this idea of, I'm going to go back to sky cam just for one second about tapping value a domain name, a premium domain name will have value. So what does that look like? I have a funny, uh, a funny example that uh, happened this week. And uh, let me just say, uh, let me pull up here. Uh, Paul Cooper over on YouTube, he says that he's intrigued. So, and uh, let me see. Chaz says, hmm, Halloween pro. Hmm. So uh, thanks for the comments, guys. So yeah, uh, a funny thing kind of happened over on Twitter. Uh, and uh, a domain investor who is also named Andrew goes by Drew. Uh, he owns Drew.com, which I've always wanted Drew.com. Like who? I, like I feel like I like ah, I want Drew.com. So my point with this is uh, there is uh, he owns a domain name Drew.com. 
obviously there's an inherent value to that domain name. He wouldn't sell that domain name for $10, right? Because ultimately there's a lot of value in it. So, uh, you know, I contact him and say, hey, Drew, uh, can I get a directory on that domain name? Maybe drew.com slash wash, you know? Uh, and, uh, it, you know, it, mostly out of, out of joking. But what I'm essentially saying is, hey, you already have this asset, kind of tap it. And uh, he said, you know, he, he said, how much would you pay? And I said, uh, like a hundred bucks a year. I have no idea. It's, it's for the fun of it more than anything else. But that is what I mean when I'm saying tap it, right? Where there's value. He has this valuable domain name, drew.com. And I'm saying I'm willing to pay some money just to be part of it, just to kind of have a little piece of it, just this like little piece. And uh, I refer to it uh, sometimes with some of the projects that we do uh, as like timeshare. Like it's, it's essentially the idea that we're taking a larger asset and sharing it amongst little, little smaller parts. So uh, there you go, Drew. Uh, if you, if you want a hundred bucks a year or we can chat about it, maybe sweeten the deal somehow, but uh Anyhow, so that is the idea of pulling value out of it, just kind of turning on the spigot, tapping it. So uh, let's go over to our three minutes uh, and let's see what our next domain name is. And as I kind of mentioned, you can uh, get the three minute, um, the three minute worksheet that we use. Uh, you can get that here, the dtp.tv three minute plan or domain to profit.com slash three minute plan. Uh, and that will give you that PDF. And we're going to move on to our next domain name which is Safe Venue. So I thought that this one specifically caught my eye. This one expires, uh, auction ends tomorrow. So if you're interested in this one, make sure you're diving in. Uh, not much action on it as of right now. You can see it says 12 bucks. Uh, but, well, let's start the timer. So safevenue.com. Uh, and I feel like nowadays in this environment that we have in our world, safety is everything, especially when it comes to a venue. Uh, venue needs to uh, be safe, not just safe uh, security-wise, bodyguards.com, but <laughs> not just safe uh, from uh, security-wise, but also people want to know that their venue is safe from COVID, you know. So there's this uh, unique opportunity right now to uh, create safe venues. I think a lot of people out there right now, uh, so we're looking for people that are looking for venues and then venues, people that provide trade uh, conference centers, hotel, ballrooms, things like that. Those are the venues. That's the market we're talking about. The problem I think that we are uniquely set up for right now is people want to know where can I even host an event right now? Like where is an event space that actually cares about uh, my COVID virus safety? Something like that. There's a lot of people out there asking it. So the problem is, okay, how do they find these venues? The solution, well, you know where to find them. Savevenue.com, people. Okay, so savevenue.com, we create a directory of safe venues around your area. So basically, you would contact uh, hotel ballrooms, conference centers, all those different things. Uh, you would contact enough of them to get yeses, and then you charge them a monthly or annual fee, probably. You want to probably do something so this new site that's a little longer horizon, we'll talk about pricing someday. Uh, but basically, you're going to charge them to be listed and featured on safevenue.com because safe venue, from your message wise, is where you go to make sure that your event is held at a safe venue. So, gosh, it's a good one. So, uh, anyhow, so safevenue.com is where you go to find safe venues. And uh, so I would go with the old fashioned. Uh, let me see here. We want to go with the value of this domain name. We're going to tap it by simply listing. If I can get it to show up here. We're just going to tap it and pull off some of the value that is uh, coming from, uh, from you know, pulling people that want to have safe venues. And the authority of the domain name, it only makes sense. If you're looking for a safe venue, you would go to safe venue. Uh, so what I was saying is this tapping over here. So where would you go to find a safe venue? Safevenue.com. That's this authority piece. It's something that you have that others can't. They're going to trust your domain name more because you have safevenue.com than if you tried to put something up on uh, safe, 
uh, I don't know, uh, venues that are safe, xyze.com or something. You can build the same site on any different domain name, but one of them is going to have the authority to gain trust right off the bat when you make that phone call on the awareness front to say, hey, Mr. Uh, venue, you know, I want to list you on my site. I'm safevenue.com. Boom. Give me your credit card, people. Give me your credit card. You're listed on safevenue.com. I don't know. I think it makes sense. I think it's a good business. Anybody else? How would you build this domain name? Would it be a directory of safe venues? Would you do something else? Do you operate a venue? Although the thing is, is if you're going to use that kind of tapping of the value, uh, safe venues can be spread all over the world. Do you really want to limit it to your venue in Cincinnati, Ohio, or Columbus, or anywhere else? You really want to make sure that you're kind of sharing it in some way, even if you're the number one featured. So let me know. Make sure you hit that chat and let us know how you would develop out a business on safevenue.com. 12, 12 bucks ends tomorrow. I'm sure to go higher, but uh, you know, run some numbers, which I'll talk to you about. That's what we're going to talk about next week is how to value a domain name. What are some basic ways you can kind of say, okay, safe venue, here's what I estimate we'd be able to do. And boom, here's what I'm willing to pay for this domain name. I'll help you a little bit on that next uh, week. So uh, I, it, it's a good domain name. It will go higher than $12, obviously. So the, que- well, I think it's obvious, maybe not. Uh, I'm shocked sometimes. Uh, but basically, uh, you know, it's going to go higher when you get into these auctions. I just talked to somebody this week that says they don't mess with auctions much because it's, you get carried away at times, you know, you don't want to get carried away with these auctions. I do it. I'm, I'm in auctions all the time. You would think that I wouldn't get carried away that I'd be a pro, but actually just last week, uh, one of the domains I featured, I will never tell you a domain that I'm, uh, going to bid on on this broadcast, but after the fact, I'll tell you, one of the domains I did buy was itworker.com. Uh, and on that domain name, my max bid was supposed to be 680. And I got carried away, got got caught up in the auction. Next thing you know, I it paid around $1,100 for it. Uh, so even, so basically, if you're going to get in the uh, into the domain auction world, make sure that you know what your max price is set it and walk away. That's typically what I do is set a price and then walk the heck away. uh, So you're not there for uh, the on off. You either get it or you don't. So move forward. So uh, let's see, we have a little bit of an idea. So uh, Paul here says, I turn it into an authority site, giving advice to venues on how to be safe. Okay. So an advice type thing, Uh, you can certainly do that. And, um, Somewhere down the road, Paul, I'll offer up a uh, one of the ways that I would actually recommend doing that. So unless you are a, a, a venue um, COVID expert, realistically, you're going to have to pay somebody for that content or go research it. And it's a, a big pain in the butt. Like I don't, I write very little content. Like for this show is about it. Like this, to bring it to you, this is the only time I mess with content at all. Uh, What I do is, well, this is a little preview of what we'll talk about more in extension in the future. I create ways for the actual experts to add content for me. So I, you know, on say, say venue.com, I would create a way for those who run the venues to add the advice and the things that they're doing to keep their venue safe and they can then share it out. So they're already the expert. They're in the trenches why would I want to become an expert in, in COVID safety? But yes, you can absolutely do this. Numerous businesses out there uh, in websites, possibly some that Paul runs. Uh, there's an entire industry of people that essentially will uh, create content. You give them a topic, they go research it, they write articles, they write things to help you with search engine optimization and to, uh, to help a website get content around that subject. Uh, certainly an absolute option. I don't do it, but I assure you, I'm just one guy. Lots of people do it. Like, there's a lot of people that earn there. So, yes, Paul is definitely onto something there. You can create the content, uh, and you can show uh, that you are an expert. And of course, as he mentions here, uh, it's through an authoritative domain name, right? 
they and that's that's the secret there is what he's hitting on. Uh, they can create that content, put it on their own website, but ultimately that doesn't show they're authoritative, right? The only way that you get authority is if somebody else is kind of stamping a seal of approval on it. And what we're doing is stamping the authoritative domain name seal of approval on that content when they put it on our website. So now they're published on safevenue.com. So obviously that article has more weight than if it wasn't. And it was just on, you know, XYZ venue, bellasala.com, something like that. So, uh, so yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Paul's on it. Paul, you're, you seem to know what the heck you got going on with this content. So, uh, I love it. I love it. Uh, so, okay, well, let's uh, let's dive in. So, uh, Paul's on it with the safe venue. I'm going to move on to our next domain name. And it is, let's pull up uh, the safe, or this uh, timer here. We're going to be moving on to rarefoods.com. Rarefoods.com. This is a GoDaddy auction, and uh, I've not shown it yet. So, let me show you. As far as Namejet, Namejet.com is where you would go for that. You need to search for that domain name, find it, set up an account, enter a credit card number. Uh, if you ever want to bid on a domain name uh, at most of these locations above a couple thousand dollars, you'll actually have to go through a process to become a like a authorized buyer. So uh, make sure you kind of check out the terms of their auctions. Here's where this one will be. Uh, it's auctions.godaddy.com. Uh, you'll find it on there. You want to do a search for rarefoods.com. This auction is going to end in five days as of last night when I checked it out. 55 bucks is what it was looking at. Uh, so let's start the timer and we'll talk about rarefoods.com. So uh, on the authoritative stand for, standpoint, uh, there are, especially on the luxury side of things, a lot of people that are into rare foods rare foods. We all want to try something. We all, it's inherent into our brains, curiosity, right? We want to try new things uh, like calamari. I know a lot of people at calamari all the time. I remember the first time I was at a restaurant, it was like, I think a Brio or something like that. And they have the calamari thing. And I'm like, no, no, no. Then of course I'll try it out of curiosity. Sure. Calamari might not be a rare food, uh, but that's just one case where I've done it, and I'm sure I've ate many, many things. Actually, what, how about this? I'm an Ohio State Buckeye, uh, and years ago when uh, when Urban Meyer still coached for Florida and Ohio State played Urban, or played Florida for the uh, national title, Ohio State got crushed. Bummer, because I'm a Buckeye. But uh, well, we they had at the uh, store they had Gator. Okay, Florida Gators. So I bought some some gator, and uh, we seasoned it up and and made this gator. And there you go. I don't know if it's rare, but it was for us. It was a rare food timed right right with an event. Uh, so our audience market is going to be people that are looking to uh, uh, to try rare foods, either to try rare foods or they have a supply where they sell rare foods it's pretty easy to kind of write the narrative of what this would be. And uh, I'm going to, uh, so uh, the value of the domain name, it's going to have value. This will go for already $55. It's going to go for more. What we want to do is create a business that's going to just tap it. Okay. How can we uh, create an opportunity to just tap, draw some money out? I like the idea of having uh, rare food people from all over the world that are out to sell rare food. Um, we list it there. You can do it by product and then you click on a product and then uh, under that product, you'd have places you can buy it or order it, uh, whether it's online or global, whatever the different uh, logistics of it are. Uh, the thing is you don't actually have to sell rare food. You just provide the website. So uh, it would require a little more technical stuff. It wouldn't be just a one page directory listing, uh, but essentially people would either, uh, you'd make your money, your source of revenue would be either from them paying to list their foods as a as a place to buy, or maybe you sell based on commission. Um, I, I always like the idea they pay to list a product and they pay a monthly fee or an annual fee to do it just because I like to just, just pull some money out, just a little, little drip, little drip. 
because uh, the value of the domain doesn't change. All you're doing is pulling out the, some of the things. So uh, finding the people in your awareness piece, oh, time's up. But I, that would be a lot of Googling. I honestly don't know anything about rare foods and where to find people, but uh, hopefully uh, hopefully you'll be able to figure out the awareness piece. I'm guessing you just have to find the rare food and you know, find the people to uh, sell to. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm not a rare food guy. I eat. Uh, People make fun of me all the time because I eat literally like the same things every day for lunch. Like this week, it'll be one thing. Next week, so I'm not a rare food guy, but uh, I, I am curious and I like to try new things. So lots of people out there. So there you go, rarefoods or rarefood.com up on Google. Uh, how would you do it? You know what it is. Uh, whether you're watching this on replay or watching it now, uh, comment in the chat, comment on the uh, in the comments. How would you build a business on rarefood.com? So I, that's one of the, I, I like that domain name. It's a fair one. It's a, it's a fun one. So uh, what I want to pull up next, because I want to keep these uh, domain pieces going, is I want to pull up our next three minutes. And it's going to be cosmetictraders.com. Cosmetictraders.com. And I'm just going to start the clock on this. So keep things moving. Cosmetictraders.com. My goodness gracious, you cannot get on social media without Somebody out there pushing cosmetics, uh, people, uh, anyhow, I, my makeup looks pretty good most days, but, uh, uh, anyhow, so cosmetictraders.com, a lot of money in cosmetics. And here's the thing I know about cosmetics, which isn't much, but I also, I know that a lot of people pay and buy cosmetics, freaking maybe use it once. And then it just sits there forever without ever being used. I know the stuff goes bad. I think I've been told that. Maybe I'm mistaken, but it goes bad as of some point. But if not, if you've tried it, you know it's not your color, trade it out, right, on CosmeticTraders.com. Our audience is very much the people that are out there watching Instagram. Uh, ooh, that's going to be part of the awareness for sure, Instagram. Uh, but what we're going to be looking for are those people who uh, are more on the uh, frugal side or the um, – whether the fashionistas or the people that try to look good, but on a budget, right? So uh, they're out there, they want to try cosmetics, but they also don't want to just have a stack full of them on their thing. If it works great, they stick with it. If not, they can trade it on to somebody else, whether it's for money or for another product. I know that there's some things that I'd have to, that you'd have to figure out. There's problems that you would have to solve because ultimately do you really want to put something that went on your face and, have somebody else probably not like you don't want to share somebody's lipstick. Anyhow, problems just need to be solved, right? That's why businesses exist. We are looking for a problem. In fact, let me just show you that here. We are looking for a problem and we need to have the solution. That right there is why businesses exist. Problem, solution. Uh, so we want to make sure that, uh, so if we're solving these problems and it's going to start a timer again. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to take it off. So uh, if we have a problem and we're solving those problems to create a business around cosmetic trading, uh, then that means that you are creating a true business that is out to help people. And you can pull some of that value that you're creating in the world out of the source of, source of revenue. So where are you going to trade your cosmetics? Cosmetictraders.com. Authoritative domain name tells you exactly what it is that's going to happen on the domain name. And uh, it's, a great domain, $12, right? Unless something's spelled wrong there, cosmetictraders.com. Uh, I'm a little shocked it's $12. Awareness, Instagram, uh, and different, uh, the people that put on the makeup, pay a couple of them to be like, oh, we have all this extra stock and we're putting it out on cosmetictraders.com or something like that. Anyhow, I apologize if my female voice offends. <laughs> Only, only kind of. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, sorry about this little flicker. I see a flicker on the camera. Tech issues. That's not, that's the worst one we have when we're doing pretty good. So webaccounting.com is the next one. And let me go off here and come back because I want to reset that timer. Come on, tech. Okay, so uh, what we're looking for with 
webaccounting.com kind of says it right accounting based on the web so uh just recently we moved our business uh from quickbooks software to quickbooks online uh, all accounting all bookkeeping is moving to the internet right we don't need especially in this day and age everything's remote you're not going to go meet with your accountant it's going to be remote so web accounting is a uh, obviously going to be a big thing uh it's an authoritative domain name in that it tells you what's going to be on it. So I think what we're looking at is those who need accounting services, basically small businesses, especially webaccounting.com is where you go to find uh, or get maybe, uh, maybe online services, uh, online custom services. So you meet with accountants through the website itself pay either a per project or per hour fee uh, for them to uh, log into your QuickBooks online or online software, set things up. I'm not an accountant, so I'd have to figure some stuff out on that. I'm trying to dive in a little bit. So if you are an accountant, if you are a CPA, if you are interested in this kind of thing, you have the love, the passion related to uh, accounting. Uh, gosh, I got a story on that, but I'm not going to share it. Anyhow. After this, after I'm off the clock, but uh, if you're if you're passionate about accounting, then this you you can solve the problems related to it, uh, to where you're offering your services through the web, and accountants from across the uh, globe are able to do the same. Your authoritative domain name is going to be what's there. Webaccounting.com. It says exactly what you're going to do. You're going to meet with accountants through the web. So webaccounting.com, if you call somebody and say, hey, I'm with webaccounting.com, they're going to be like, is there somebody with web accounting? Like they know. I don't. I need a good way to say, like they know. They just, they get it. It's just part of the domain name. It's that authoritative domain. But I get tired of saying it's an authoritative domain. It's a domain name that tells people, that gives you an in, it lets people, the gatekeepers open up and uh, let you pass to actually talk to decision makers. Awareness can be a lot of phone calls uh, to accountants to get them and, or you probably Google them up, find the ones that are already doing online type stuff and bring and aggregate them into one place on webaccounting.com. So uh, I like usual, I'd probably do per hour per project type stuff with some kind of membership type things. I like the reoccurring revenue the best way to kind of tap things. Uh, so what I was just going to say is uh, as far as passion and about accounting um, is I, I sat and I went to Ohio State and I hated accounting. It was like one of my least favorite subjects in business school. Uh, and I was sitting in the back row of this lecture hall and uh, I'm sitting back there and I'm kind of like with the guy next to me. I'm like, you know, I'm, I really hate accounting. That's why I'm back here. I just like want to just get this class over with and move on. And, you know, I'm thinking he's in the back row too. He's in the same boat as me. He looks at me deadpan and goes, I can't wait to get out into the world and do some real accounting. Like anyhow, different strokes for different folks. So hopefully that guy's out there, professional accountant getting what he is, what it is he wants in the world. Uh, but if you are one of those people passionate about accounting, then webaccounting.com for you. I don't know. Anyhow, I, my degree was in logistics, which I love transportation logistics. And you'll see most of the domains I own, including like towing.com, it's based on uh, based on that, very much that. So let me try going over to this laptop cam, change up the view here a little bit, just to get that flicker off our screen. Okay. So uh, what I want to do is... Uh, is go to the next, uh, let's go to the next domain name, which is going to require me to bring back up the Flickr. So, but here we go. Web accounting, next one up is golive.com. Golive.com is uh, going live. Goinglive.com. Uh, it's what I did at three o'clock today uh, was uh, I very much hit the button and I'm going live. Made an announcement on Twitter. Maybe that's how you heard about this. We're going live. So uh, this domain name, because so many people are going live, 
Give me one second. Let me... Okay, sorry. I wanted to uh, get some tech stuff. Try to get rid of that flicker here in a minute. Uh, so what I'm going to do is start the timer. And I'm going to do this one from Skycam. So go ahead, Chuck. Up. And, okay, so I started the timer here. And what I'm going to do, there we go. Boom, like clockwork, flicker gone. Hopefully it stays gone. We are goinglive.com uh, on GoDaddy. As you can see, this domain name is already pulling off that, uh, you know, it already has a lot of value. So. Uh, somebody, you know, it's going for 407 as of last night, and it has seven days left before it actually reaches it. So there's a lot of value. So uh, people are probably, uh, you have the brokers that are grabbing it, hoping to sell it off in the future for more money. Uh, possibly you're looking to buy it uh, to pull off. Let's see if we can come up with a business that either pulls off some of the value or a way that we can put in the effort to uh, develop something up here and just pump the value up to us. Uh, so. Going live, huge right now. Everybody's going live. I see numerous different live things. Every day somebody's announcing that they're doing this. I mean, just a few weeks ago, I'm announcing that I'm doing this show. So um, broad audience, which uh, could be a good thing or a bad thing. So the broader the audience, the more the website gets a little more diluted. So going live is a general term. So it's going to be a valuable domain name but it may have a lot of potential because of that. But the value, you know, a lot of people go live. So it's going to require a lot of creativity. So basically, uh, based on the domain name, the audience is going to be people that are both going live and looking for live programs. Uh, each different service out there has their own platform, whether it's Periscope or YouTube, Facebook. Goinglive.com might be where you aggregate those different services. How you monetize is going to be the different problem. So the problem is you have to go to all these different places to view live things. The solution would be go to goinglive.com and view live programs from across platforms, and you would click on it and probably go over to the native platform. The only thing is, is you have the authoritative domain name. People would be willing to share it because you'd be solving a problem. The monetization piece is. Uh, in this day and age, I don't like to do the banner advertisements, but ultimately that may be your best bet is to build up the traffic, build up the click uh, click stuff and do some good old fashioned banner ads. Um, and you could, of course, if you, as your traffic builds, which, you know, a lot of people say that lightly, like, oh, as your traffic builds, which is freaking hard, right? Everybody wants traffic. Uh, but as your traffic builds, you have tons of opportunities uh, from featured uh, featured live shows to uh, maybe even a native going live.com live stream, all kinds of different stuff. Only thing is it's going to be a little, uh, it's going to be maybe not overly technical. Some of it would be easy through some APIs, uh, which in itself is technical, but uh, time up. But that's a tough one. That's a tough one. It'd be a fun project if you have a lot of passion and if you're going to be a coder, if you're already a coder uh, or somebody that's tech savvy. If you're looking for uh, something that you can just do as a hobby, uh, one, it's going to be probably a pretty expensive domain name. I'm guessing it's going to easily hit four figures. Uh, so I don't know. Hopefully that's helpful. If nothing else, there you go. Goinglive.com coming up for auction, ending in seven days. And like this domain, like many, these will go away. Like that domain name will come up for auction, it will sell. And as long as it changes hands to the buyer, Chances are it's gone. This opportunity will be gone. Like each of these domain names, poof, gone. Like they're in the hands of an owner that may or may not ever let it go again. So uh, that's just such an important piece of things. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to pull over to uh, comments because I got, uh, let's see, Jameson says, uh, paid industry analysis newspaper for people live streaming industry. So, yes, there you go. Yeah, analysis. Ooh. I like that. Uh, you got to be willing to. Uh, you got to be willing to 
analyze truthfully, which is going to give you that uh, that TMZ vibe to where you're going to have to be mean to a lot of people, but uh, yeah, as long as you can deal with that. I don't like being mean to people. I'm overly nice. It's almost a character flaw. But yeah, analyze live streams. Uh, hey, if you're going live, you are subject to the approval, the stamp of goinglive.com where we bring you and analyze live streams from around the world. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, let me see. And, and I'm not sure what these are. He says sort of like uh, stretchery. Sorry, I don't know what that is. Uh, or uh, let me see, Van Trump report. So there you go. I, I, people that actually know something about uh, – I, I just don't know. I, I live in a box, man. I'm, I'm in the lab all the time playing with stuff. I don't, I don't know what those are. But I'm guessing a lot of people do. So those are some, some possible uh, going live type editorial type things. Okay. Let me uh, move on to the next one because I'm running low on time. And I have two more domains I want to bring to you. So let's go on to toplaptop.com. Starting the clock. And let me go off here. And I got to come back over. Okay, here we go. Three-minute clock for toplaptop.com. Uh, I don't like content sites. That's my personal view of them. Uh, but ultimately, content websites make the world go round, and nothing says content website like a domain name like toplaptop.com. Uh, ultimately, new laptops come out every single year, and uh, this would be a great opportunity for somebody to create a content-based blog, and maybe it's like almost a one-pager. Here's our top laptops for gamers, top laptops for business people, top laptops for, you know, each of the categories of laptops. Uh, so people that are looking for laptops, which is uh, I'm go to a new laptop every year or so, uh, well, two years or so. But uh, I'm always looking for what's the top laptop for my needs. Uh, I, in fact, I was looking for what's the best laptop for streaming when I started this. So uh, tap lap, top laptop dot com. Uh, it's going to be editorial analysis and ultimately ratings. Uh, your opinion on the top laptops, uh, and then basically uh, changes all the time. Uh, you could either do it through Amazon affiliate links to where Amazon pays you commission when somebody buys a laptop through your link, uh, or direct advertising. Uh, there's any number of different uh, options. I believe that this one would be. I don't know what the keywords look like, how difficult. I could pull up the analysis, but I'm running close to an hour, so I don't want to go that route. But I'm not sure what the keywords to rank for top laptop are, but that's a great keyword. So if you could rank for top laptop or toplaptops.com or at all for keyword, uh, there's going to be some big traffic, big money coming through there. Uh, so basically your problem, the problem is what's the top laptop? You do the research for your visitors. The visitors come in, and the solution is that you've aggregated the top laptops based on categories and then provide them the place to go transact to buy that laptop. Uh, I would love something. I'd be a consumer of such a service. Tap laptop. Top laptop. It's actually kind of it's like top laptop. It's Okay, there's a joke there somewhere. I'm not going to make it, though. Um, but... Uh, Anyhow, 184 is what it's going for over on GoDaddy. Uh, and a great domain name. If anybody's out there looking to uh, develop a content-based page where they deal with laptops, uh, consumer report type style, this one may be for you. Uh, let me know how you would build it out. Awareness would be, I think it's going to be a lot of just uh, brute force you know, trying to get awareness for as cheap as possible through ads or linking or SEO ultimately. And uh, then when you start to have revenue coming in, creating, acquiring more traffic for cheaper. So uh, I like that domain name. It's a pretty good one. Uh, 184 currently, I'm guessing that one's going to hit that uh, lower four figure mark. Uh, but I, who knows, who knows? So let's go on to our final domain name right now, as we're approaching the top of the hour, and we're going to wrap this up so we can wrap up this week's uh, From Domain to Profit. Ad Creative on the clock. Resetting the clock one more time because I keep hitting the wrong button. And here we go. AdCreative.com, three-minute timer. Audience market. Uh, ultimately, uh, when we talk about this here, 
awareness, right? All of marketing, in my opinion, breaks down into authority and awareness. This is authority, which is trust, uh, like whether you, you, you like your testimonials, your uh, whether you're an expert in something, all of that falls under authority. Uh, and then awareness is whether they hear about you or not. So all of awareness is going to break down uh, a lot of times into ads, right? And people need to come up with the creatives for that, whether it's a, uh, a banner ad, a video, a script, or the copy for those ads. Uh, there's a lot that goes into the creative side of an ad. So adcreative.com has the authority that kind of says, hey, when you're looking, when you're doing any of these business ideas that we're talking about here or any other business idea that can ever come to your imagination, ultimately when you get to awareness and you need to come up with a creative piece of the ad, adcreative.com has you covered. I think it's a great place to uh, host different classes, uh, of course, have maybe links or affiliate options to uh, places like Fiverr, Guru.com, Upwork, uh, places where you can pay people to kind of create the graphics or things. Or if you're super ambitious, you create a service like that yourself on adcreative.com since it's very niche. You find people that specialize in that kind of thing, charging a commission per job. Uh, there you go, adcreative.com. Uh, it's authoritative. I think it sounds like something that could very much be a magazine. Hopefully it's not, uh, but uh, it, it makes sense. And uh, the awareness piece of it, uh, it's going to be a lot of uh, reaching out, running ads, trying to draw in people to, uh, to list themselves on the site and bring in jobs. Probably go the route of targeted Facebook and Google advertising. Um, I think that's probably the way that I would go. Uh, or if you offer ad creatives, if you want, this is going to be the easy option. If you already offer this service, you pull this domain name in, and then you just cast a broader net with a more authoritative domain name because you're the expert behind adcreative.com. Uh, there you go. It's running for 250 Auction ends in about, well, six days over on Google. So let me know. Uh, keep me posted on all these different domain names. Uh, we brought you nine different opportunities uh, here on From Domain to Profit, as well as let me go over to Skycam one last time. We talked about the difference between potential and value for a domain name and uh, how you can pull out some of that, the value of a domain name by buying low, selling high. But ultimately what we want to do is take the value that a domain name provides and either build on it or what I like to do, just tap that bad boy and let some of the value pop out of the side. So hopefully you've gotten some good content. Uh, whether you're watching this on a replay or not, please add comments below. Like this stream, subscri subscribe to this channel so that way it can uh, bump up in YouTube and uh, more people can uh, gain your competitive advantage that we bring to you here on from, from, from Domain to Profit. So let me uh, check in with chat here. Uh, yeah, and uh, just on, on creative ad, Paul says that the words are around. I agree. I would prefer to have creativead.com or even an ads plural in there, which somebody asked me to talk about uh, plural versus singular. I will have to do that another time because none of the domains kind of brought me into that conversation. Anyhow, let me wrap it up here. Uh, from Domain to Profit, Drew Wash, thanks for joining me this week.